so many people have asked me about this vertical wall and how we put it together. So I made a video just to answer that question. I went back through all the footage that we have and put you together this really cool thing on how we built this vertical wall against my house. So if you want to know all about that, stick around for the next dozen or so minutes. And if you don't, go bake some cookies or whatever you do. I'm John Adams with Modern Design Aquascaping and our team builds world-class bounce fountains and waterfalls out of natural stone and wood. And today, it is my pleasure to share with you exactly how we built this really cool thing right here. I'm gonna go swim with her. You watch the rest of the video. So there's a French drain where the form is gonna go where we're pouring this footer. We put a French drain under the pond, which runs out below. Then there's rock pad, then there's liner, then there's rock pad again. We were very cautious. We decided to build this form for our footer out of treated plywood and treated two by four so that we could use it for a bridge in the future on job sites. So that's why you see Hunter and Aiden putting this thing together like they're building the Taj Mahal because they wanted to make something that would hold a man in a wheelbarrow later. You see Will and Aiden setting this in right now and the way they're putting the form it's very important that the form is level and positioned perfectly because we had custom cut flagstone slabs and the slabs are actually 60 inches exactly tall so we needed a quarter inch to three eighths extra space we put the two flat boulders in front of there just so we could install some bracing see we'll put the bracing in here that goes all the way across to hold the outward pressure of the concrete and then there's also a brace that lays, you just see the board on the bottom there with the arrow and that's supporting the bottom of the form. So that's what you've got for support. Then the fiberglass rebar we did with zip ties, we've got vertical rebar, horizontal rebar. We went overkill, it actually extends behind the framing boulders on both sides as does the footer. So that's what keeps that thing solid and it's all poured what they call monolithic. It's all just one solid pour into the rocks, into the rebar. It's amazing and strong, and basically the whole entire pond has to cave in in order for that footer to come down. We put the concrete mixer in, and we set that down on another piece of rock pad with an extra piece of scrap liner on top to keep the mess down to a minimum. It was a great idea. We made it almost all the way to the finish line before we broke the pull cord. Apparently, uh, the pull cord was dry rotted, so you're gonna see the team hand mixing the last bit of the concrete in here, but. It went pretty easy. Many hands makes for light work. You can see the five gallon buckets. That's what we used to install most of our stuff. We didn't want anybody banging shovels or anything into the side of the house. The last place we wanted to make a hole in our liner is right against the foundation of the house. We do not want to create moisture problems there. We spent so much time with the waterproofing to make sure that we had backup plan and a backup plan to our backup plan in case any water ever gets over against the house foundation that it drains down and away. You can see they're even hand tamping in here with the, the handles from our picks and that allowed them to gently tamp all the air out of there so that we got a nice solid pour. Yeah, this is Hunter being excited about the hand mixing. It went pretty easy, you know, these rebars that I put in at the end are because we're going to pour a curb later. You'll see the curb go in. That's actually what holds the flagstones from falling over. And so those fiberglass rebars are to hold the curb down so that it can't just fall off the top of the other one and separate. All right, cool. Come here. Come over here. I want to show you something that's been going on. Just bring yourself. Phone and all. Come on. All right, you're close enough. Stop right there. All right. I just wanted to share some of this because we're doing a lot of problem solving. Ingenuity kind of stuff as we get through here. So the idea was, of course, that we were going to pour this curve down here. Gravity is going to hold this thing standing straight up and down. That's going to hold our liner. We're going to do a bit of a silicone seal. I did not want a piece of metal trim or anything showing up here. So we're like trying to figure out how do we do this, but we got some liner folds back here. We got some underlayment. We got some rock pad. We got the waterproofing from the house. We start getting this air gap back here. I can almost fit my fingers behind this thing. You can see it moving. And I just all of a sudden imagine what happens when my grandkids are in here swimming. 
they're gonna swim up to the house, they're gonna put their feet on here and they're gonna push off. And I started questioning the stability and the safety of what we've done. I'm like, okay, how are we gonna hold this thing in? Well, we decided, well, if we didn't put a little foam behind here so that there's not an air gap, that'll stop this thing from being able to move. That's gonna solve our problem. Then we're like, eh, how do we get the foam back there? Well, we're gonna brace this all the way across so that it's all held into place before we pour the footer down here. Then the problem we gotta solve is, we can't get the foam in between these things. There's nowhere to actually shoot the foam in. So then we came up with this idea. We happen to have this 18 foot long six by six laying around, which wedges perfectly in between the stones. So our idea now is that we're gonna brace from the six by six to this rock. We're gonna push it all the way in and hold it so that the foam doesn't blow them all out of whack because we all know what happens when you put foam in and then you let it do its thing and it just creates pressure. So then these are all uneven. So we're gonna brace this thing across here with all those random boards and piles of junk that we got. We're gonna shoot the foam on the in-between. We're gonna go eat some Mexican food and when we come back, everything's gonna be perfect. Rays of light shine down from the sky. Ah, the angels sing, I'm out. <laughs> so you see us bringing the slabs in. We had these slabs custom cut, we ordered them exact specifications they were pretty expensive to do the natural tennessee flagstone but we wanted it to match everything else on the project of course it went pretty flawlessly just a lot of detail work super slow and meticulous being careful with the stone um, yeah and our boulders you see us taken out they were just a little too short for the bracing for the form on the curb and you'll see the team putting that in here pretty soon but the idea of shooting the foam back in behind those slabs worked really well. It solved all our problems. They were very stable, pushing on the top. We didn't have any movement left in them. They're literally just freestanding behind the curb when we get done. And the silicone bead across the top, everything is honky-dory. You can see the bracing across the bottom they used to hold it and get everything perfectly level with each other. It just turned out fantastic. I mean, it's all within a quarter inch tolerance probably. There's a little bit of movement here and there. Yeah, we had to put in the taller boulders so that we could do the bracing on this curb, but the curb was a pretty elaborate creation. Putting that in and Hunter's form, obviously it's very basic form that they're putting together here that just screws down to the top of the other form. But we have a lot going in behind there. The plumbing runs in from that left side over where Hunter's at for the jets. The jets go through the form. There's conduit that comes in both sides that leads to these two light fixtures. You see us cutting out the uh, pipes for the light fixtures. So that's poured into the form and those sleeves run all the way up to the top of the pond. So all of our conduit and our lighting and our jets is all recessed into this curb, hidden in the concrete. It looks very clean, very professional at the end of the project. You'll notice that there's really not much there to look at, which was the idea. Rebar again in the curb to keep it. We tied it into the uprights that are sticking out of the lower slab. So everything's hooked together. This is where the two inch plumbing comes in from the jets across the bottom of the pond. We tried to use schedule 40 conduit in the concrete as much as possible because if anything gets squished down in there or stops your light wires, etc., from going where you want them to go, there's no backing up. So final step, cleaning it up and mixing the concrete, yay. Get her done, put her in. It, again, just a lot of slow, meticulous work. Very detailed. And it worked like a charm. Do me a favor. Why don't you guys uh, hit the like button down there? Smash that bell and get notified when we put content out. Subscribe to our channel. Do all the, all the details. You know, I love sharing this stuff with you guys. And I hope that you're able to utilize this information to build something magnificent in your life or someone else's in the future. I'm such a geek. Look at what a pretty footer this is. Nice curb. The team went home, took a couple days off. That gave me the opportunity to come in here. I had Aiden out there and he washed all of the flagstone veneer. I got a matching blue gray flagstone veneer to put on the wall. See me doing a scratch coat here. He got everything nice cleaned up, washed all the sediment off of it for me. And then while everybody was gone, I took that opportunity for a couple days to get the scratch coat on. 
get the flagstone laid in, everything finished up and detailed and ready for the project to move on. I used a two by at the bottom for the spacer to hold the flagstone up off the bottom of the pond. And what I ended up doing with that space down on the bottom is I have a piece of soaker hose that runs across through there to hook the aeration. So if I want to hook my aerator up, I have a nice bubble curtain that runs up that wall. We just took some random shapes so that we lost that straight line. Hunter did cut, just beautiful job cutting around all that stuff. We mortared in, chopped down the PVC pipes to the lights recess right down in there like we wanted them to. Everything just came together exactly as we hoped. For not being masons, we didn't do all that bad, which is nice. through for our lighting always we use conduits whether we're going through con concrete slabs or not we always use conduits and pull our light wires in like that because it's just simple we started using these jets like they use in fish tanks and the things are just solid and you would not believe what a difference it makes in a great big pond when you can use flow adjustments and angle adjustments to steer the currents to push debris where you want it to go. Absolutely incredible. And that was the beautiful job that we had when we got done. A whole lot of work for something to really just disappear, but dun dun dun. What do you think guys? Let me know, seriously. Any questions you have, more particular details you want answered, just put them down there in the comments section. Appreciate you guys. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, do the deed, and uh, We'll be back next time. Love you guys. John G. Out.